We're here with legendary, and I can call you legendary head coach, uh, Fred Petito. <laughs> well, but you've been the head coach of the Mustangs coach since 1983. Coach Heisman Trophy winner, Eric Crouch, several other Division I guys. Um, you've got another group of kids that look to take Miller North kind of back to where this program had been in, in recent years. Um, speak about the year you had. I know you were right there, um, and the next two years look very promising for you guys. Yeah, they really do. I know everyone's optimistic at these times, but you know you watch our kids train, develop in the off season. Fortunately, at our place, we've had a number of very solid football teams, and so we know when, when we're going to be, you know, be able to go ahead and make a run. And this bunch is pretty special. Well, and you've got a couple kids that are going to be in that 2025 class. Let's start with Caden Vermas. Um, he got that Nebraska offer, and I'm sure that got a lot of people's attention. Um, why did Nebraska offer Caden, and, and what kind of potential do you see in him now moving forward? Well, he got the offer. You know, Mickey, Joseph, I've known Mickey for a long time, and what he jumped out is he liked the physicality he played with. He played so fast. And so uh, and those are things that he attributes to why they made, that's why they made the offer, okay? You know, I, and for us, I said, he's, he does a lot of things, and he's really, Really competitive young man. Okay, and he'll, he'll get the best out of himself. And what teams came into your building in this December, January? Did you have a lot of Nebraska office who was there? But what other schools came by? And well, you had the Iowa, Iowa, Iowa State, Wisconsin, Northwestern never came in, but I know that V made a trip up there. Um, I'm trying to put North Dakota State. I'm trying just trying to think who else rolled in. Yeah, there was, there was a number of them, South Dakota State. And that's all the jumps. They were coming in like five or six a day, you know. Got pretty schools. hot and heavy there. Yeah, it was pretty busy. Uh, so it started out from like the beginning. You know, we played Papio game one. Uh, see, that was kind of a big experience for me, you know, going out there. It was just right away, right off the bat, it was a lot different because there was a lot more fans in the stands, and I uh, – it was just a lot louder the game and like better scenery. It was a Friday night too, so that was a lot of fun. But uh, it definitely the game got a lot faster from freshman year. But because I played freshman all last year, but uh, you know I, I definitely adapted to it by game two because we ended up playing uh, we ended up playing prep. But uh, they those are some big dudes out there. But I think that helped all of our sophomores that uh, prep game. And th and then uh, I think after that, I mean we just kind of went from there and then. We kind of adapted. Then we played a uh, West Side over there, and those guys, like they were, they were a fast team. But I think we kept up pretty well with them. So, but yeah, you can see your competitive juices going. You see the West Side team. We're in the same room with West Side right now, yeah. so I can see you looking at those guys a little yeah. bit. But yeah. no, speak on just you know you got the Nebraska offer yeah. that probably made life a little bit different and probably got you a lot more attention, I'd imagine. Yeah. So like right immediately right away, uh, it's kind of funny because Coach Petito he called me outside and. I saw, I was walking down to, like, uh, the gym, and I saw you followed me, and I was like, I was like, I was like, that can't be right. I was like, so I said something happened. So, uh, I, yeah, I went to Coach Peel's office. He just, he said, uh, this is Mickey Joseph's number. You gotta, you gotta call him. And I was like, okay, fine. I, was, I said, I kind of knew it was gonna happen from there because normally I just didn't think I would call Coach Joseph on just out of the ordinary, but yeah, he just told me he'd offer me. Then after that day, I mean. Recruiting kind of went up. Uh, I got in contact with LeVar Woods from Iowa after that, like immediately. And then uh, I headed up to Iowa about, I think it was like three weeks later, up in late. Or no, it was uh, mid-November. It was a Nebraska game. And then, uh, yeah, after that, I got in contact with Northwestern after that game. And then uh, Wisconsin stopped in later. So that was kind of where my recruiting process went. Yeah, I think you're the first Miller North guy to get a Nebraska offer, maybe since Sean Fisher, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's been, yeah. I mean – been a while. I mean, when when you look at just moving forward for your season now, what's next? I mean, visits, camps, workouts. Like, what do you what what's the next three to six months look like for you? Uh, so I think March fourth, I'm gonna head up to Iowa. Uh, that I know for sure. Uh, then I'll start heading up to spring practices, like in Nebraska, and then uh, I think I'm gonna head back up to Chicago for about one trip for a spring practice there and talk to like sit down with the coaches, you know, and. Uh, I think I'll head up to one of, one or two of Iowa's 
spring practices for sure. I'm not 100% sure yet because I'll have baseball, but I'll, I'll figure that out when I get to that date and stuff like that. Then you've got Pierce Mooberry, another guy that um, doesn't have offers yet, but like he's going to get those, it appears. He's 6'4", 200 as an OLB, kind of has that uh, Sean Fisher build going for him heading into his junior year. That's a good analogy right there. A lot of Sean Fisher attributes. A very physical player, very intelligent player. Showing my age now, I, I can date back to your players from 15, 20 yeah, years ago. Yeah, you can pull them out. They're like, you know, and a six foot six free safety. Uh, but yeah, the same type of guy. I mean, good visual learner, good verbal learner. Mistakes are made once, and then he corrects them. He's, it's, uh, it's not hard to coach the young man. So we'll start with the offense. Um, basically, I, the ball is in the air. It's most likely going to me. Um, that's one of the main like uh, points that my offensive uh, director or he made and um, he's like if if you're in at a different position and we call like let's say I'm at wing and we call like a takeoff for the wide receiver you go to wide receiver and you run the takeoff and so basically I can just I played like three positions on offense tight end wing slot and wide receiver so four um, and then so I can I'm just very versatile on the offense and I can block out and wide receiver and then um, on defense, um, just kind of going back and forth between the outside linebacker and D-end. Um, most of the beginning of the year, I played outside linebacker. And then the last couple games, I went down to D-end and, and then uh, also kind of outside linebacker. Um, and then freshman year, though, it was only D-end for me. And uh, yeah, so I just really, wherever they feel I need to play, I Good. Now at college, I mean, how do you see that body go going? I mean, you're 200. Yeah. Do, you, do you see yourself being like a 235 guy yeah. someday? Yeah, or? absolutely. Um, so like a true outside linebacker, yeah. probably. This out uh, this off season, I'm really gonna eat and work hard on getting the weight up and maybe even go back to DN. I don't. We're not for sure yet. Um, so I you're guess. an edge guy. Is yeah. That how you yeah. yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Yep.